Welcome back. As you can see, we are up and close to our next group of cars running away. This is the VIR Speed Tour live from Virginia International Raceway. I'm Jonathan Green, and we're looking at Corzen in the 88. Our cameraman getting up close and personal for our next group, which is Group 6, 8, 12A, and 12B. Sunoco Fuel Feature Race 1. And there's some really interesting cars in this. Really looking forward to this. And I'm sure uh, Ben will be back uh, to enjoy it with us. And we might even coax Mr. Fippin back in as well. There is the 98. That's one of my favourites. Scott Borchetta in that Chevrolet Corvette. Yet to be beaten. Can you believe it this season? And he was saying uh, there's a great history to it. And uh, in fact, that car, that, Chev that uh, Corvette, uh, that 69 Corvette of Scott Borchetta, raced in Germany of all places. It was bought by the Germans to race it against the Porsches. And then it came back to the United States and Scott Morshed has got his hands on it. But it's a rare car and he has been putting some rare performances in Scott Borchetta, who if you recognize the name, uh, you may well know him from our Trans Am series, Trans Am TA2, where he is putting together some great races. He'll be out in action in that uh, later today, qualifying for TA2, that coming up at uh, local time, 6.10, so stay tuned for that. But as you can see, a real uh, eclectic group of cars from all around the world. And a large group of cars, I may add, in Group 6, 8 and 12. But it goes without saying, and one of the first things that Ben Sissel ever said to me was, I can't wait. This is Group 6. This is my favourite. This isn't my favourite. This is the crowd favorite. <laughs> My favorite is the small bore British car. Oh, that's true. You're but probably more of an expert on American muscle than I am. Well, I do like my muscle cars. I have to say, if I had a choice, uh, one of those Corvettes would do me fine. I'm not so much the fan. I love them old, old Mustangs. But not a big fan of the new ones as much. They're a bit bulky for me. we got to talk about this, though. This is group 6, 8, and 12. So... Group six is American muscle cars. Yeah. Uh, big bore production cars, basically. Not just American muscle cars, because we have Porsches and Jaguars that race in that. Group eight is more medium bore production cars. And then 12 is after 1972. So there's some David and Goliath stories here, including this Mustang and that 63 Corvette starting in the back. Those are some powerful, fast cars. So watch for them to move up front quickly. Yeah, I'm just looking at this sort of eligibility rules. And like you say, Group A class generally follow SCCA class of 72 with some adjustments for cars that were either not recognized by the SCCA or have specification that significantly change their relative performance. Nicely put. But that's what it says in the rule book. Look at this crowd. So let me go through here real quick because it looks like we have 26 cars. Starting out with Robert Corzin, Group 12, Ford Mustang Boss 302 from 2013. Behind him, you'll see Scott Borchetta, the big machine Chevrolet Corvette from 1969. That's a Group 6 GT. Mark Hildebrandt in a 6 GT 1972 Chevrolet Corvette. Patrick Sessions, Group 6 1963 Chevrolet Corvette, but starting in the back. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, let's have a fight here. Leave some <laughs> comments on YouTube. It's Ford versus Chevy. Who is better? And then there's some little European things mixed in there, too. So this is going to be a lot of fun. But uh, let's, let's hear Ford versus Chevy, guys. Who's, uh, who's going to have, who's got the most fans right now as we're watching? Then we go in this 1971 in uh, sixth position, Scott Kissinger, Datsun 240Z, Samuel Smith in a 2005 Ford Mustang, Thomas Grudovich. Watch for him. Very fast driver. A 1966 Janetta G4. I'll tell you when it comes into frame right there. That little tiny car is super fast. He drives that thing with so much momentum. I love that Escort right there. After Thomas Grudovich at 9 is John Cloud. It's John Cloud's birthday today in a 1970 Yay. Boss 302 SVRA Grabber Blue. John Strouth is 10th in a 2013 Ford Boss. Chip Stabler in a very fast BMW M3. David Porter in that Escort. Rick Ortman, our Group 10 champion from a few years ago, Chevy Corvette. John Nash, who just won the VIR Gold Cup. Probably the most coveted trophy in vintage racing just today in that Lotus Super 7. Caesar Cone has been racing now for 60 years in that yellow Alfa Romeo. And he's only 62. <laughs> yeah. Eric Bowman, Harvey Park, Fred Beasley, Dave Nicholas, 
in the NASDAQ. Chris Fennell, Glenn Maurer, Sharon Edelman in that blue, SVRA blue Janetta. Followed by my buddy David Bearden. We got to talk about him in that 1972 Porsche 911 ST. Scott Berkland, our Group 8 champion from the last couple years. Terry Miller in 25th and George Wright 26th. An eclectic mix of cars, mix of years. But it, but it's literally the history of racing in America from 19 what late 60s, 60 through through to 2013. It's all here from the from the Japanese to the British to the muscle cars of America. It it's beautiful, beautiful setup. Here we go. Now, what could Boschetta do at the start? Away they go. It's going to be a real drag race between these two. Very different cars, but very similar power. Borchetta takes the outside and takes the lead, nudging ahead. Nicely done by Scott Borchetta. Ooh, that was a bit too close for comfort. Did they touch then? I don't think so, but man, Robert Corson has been racing Scott really hard, and I know that Scott is loving it. I think Robert was kind of a little bit leery until they met each other. They're padded close together. Robert had a little bit of an incident yesterday with a, with another car, but he's back out there. It's great to see him back out there with these huge crowds. Look at these crowds. I'm so excited for the VIR Speed Tour. Well, that it's really fascinating. That's a 2013 car against the 1969 car. But look at them go. And then just behind that is another Corvette, uh, 72. And they've got their pace. There's the Datsun. There's the Shelby GT350. That is a beautiful car. 66. I've got that one uh, earmarked, if that's okay with okay. you. Okay, yeah, yeah. You know me. I'm going to like that uh, blue Janetta there, Sharon Edelman, who uh, loves racing here at uh, VIR. But i got to give it up for my buddy Robert Kors in there. You just saw he's got those day glow driving gloves. If you want us yeah. to talk about you on this live stream, get the brightest gloves you can find so that we can see your hands working the wheels of these cars. Just saw the Ford Escort, the 73 Ford Escort. I've got another favorite out there. That's David Porter at the wheel in the 58. Watch out for that. Green and white. An English Escort. Of course. And uh, if I'm not mistaken, David Porter is Scottish. There you go. Growing up, I thought Ford was a British car. See? Yeah. Yeah, it makes sense. There were, everybody had a Ford Escort or a Ford Cortina or a Ford Capri. But I suppose if you grew up in Australia, you'd probably think the same. Yeah. Yeah, if you didn't have a Holden, you probably had a Ford, right? <laughs> exactly. So, ladies and gentlemen, now I am monitoring our comments on YouTube, and I'm seeing a lot of Ford, oh, BMW, Corvette. We've got some votes from Rowdy CM for Caesar Cone, but this is, seems to be kind of Ford versus Chevy. As so it should be. Where do you land in the Ford versus Chevy rivalry? Leave us a comment. Also. If you hear us say something uh, that's just not correct, please feel free to comment. This is your time. I'm sure you've watched sports your whole life and thought, man, I, you want to yell at the commentators? Feel free to yell oh, at do. us on the comments. Oh, they do. And we will try to do what you ask us to do. Mark Hildebrand, he was involved with Watkins Glen. He's uh, in third place at the moment in that 28A uh, Corvette from 72. The silver, black, and red currently in third. Borchetta, Corzan, Corzan and... Uh, Hildebrand in third, there he is. And then just behind him, it is Kissinger, Scott's Kissinger in that Datsun 240. There he is. I really like these Datsuns. We've talked about this in years past and how uh, some of the Japanese manufacturers took the British engineering. So the Honda Civic is basically the Mini Cooper with the transverse engine. And the Datsun 240Z was the MGB GT. Just more reliable and there's the number two zero zero Jason Sessions 1966 Shelby GT 350 oh, who likes the Shelby's out there leave us some comments on our YouTube channel what's not to like that is a gorgeous car I like that boss 302 of birthday boy John Cloud right there in the SBRA grabber blue yeah it is nice like grabber blue that's there that's the Ford factory color I think from from that era Here's Scott Borchetta getting a little wiggly there. And getting the lead back. So Borchetta picks up the lead again as they come down the hill and into Hogpen. Yeah, Austin Knight's announcing in the comments saying Corvette takes the lead. There you go. 
He also said hotter than a $2 pistol. I like <laughs> that. Austin, you need to be coming here and commentating with us. I like this. There's Grudovich there. Now, he has, he's way down on power, ladies and gentlemen, but he is a very talented driver. He really should not be this far up in this field with this kind of muscle with these long straightaways. But he can really wheel that car. And that is our S, or that's our GT champion last year car from uh, the Trans Am yeah. series. And now it's out here in the vintage racing. But oh, that's right, yeah. There's Grudovich. And I've asked Mike uh, from Mike's vintage race cars, Take, prepares these cars to come up here and talk to us in one of the groups, so we expect to see him. One of my favorite uh, social media channels. He says he, he's always posting some great content with his Genettas and his little small bore uh, momentum cars. Yeah, it's amazing how uh, some of these smaller companies like Genetta have managed to punch above their weight and still do. I mean, you know, the Genetta we're looking at now. Uh, the G4 goes all the way back to 66, but uh, we had, what, our, G our GT, uh, GT championship was won by Janetta just a couple of years ago, right? Yeah. Uh, by the Cipriani was her name, wasn't it? Uh, I forget her first name. Uh, the lady from Brazil. She was the Janetta dealer in Florida. Yeah, that was the Billy Griffin car there. That That's number the Billy 14 Griffin car, yeah. of John Strauss. Uh, he and Tercilla are here from the from South Florida, Miami area, so we welcome them. We've had some uh, drivers here drive from Southern California to come join us at this VIR speed tour for the first time. There's the 827 of Chip Stabler. Chip did our uh, SVRA race school a few years ago at Roebling Road with that car. Really good driver. Yes, we haven't mentioned the German entries that much. Obviously, we've got Porsche, BMW, uh, and we've got the odd Alfa Romeo out there, 1967 out there. Say Cesar Kern uh, driving one of those. Yeah, speaking of fights, it's Axis versus Allies. <laughs> we've got the American and the British cars versus the German and the Japanese and Italian cars right here. It's World War II on VIR as we speak. There is a German car. So do you fall more Axis or Allies in the cars that you like? I'm an ally. I'm an ally guy. Um, but the German cars, though. But then again, I, <laughs> that said, I've owned a Mercedes and, a, <laughs> and an Audi in my, in my time, as well as an MG. But, uh, yeah, I, I look at the German cars and I say... Sorry, I distracted you, Jonathan. That's Austin Knight made a comment that he covered the F4 and FR America's E-Series during lockdown. We'll see. There you go. There you and go. here's your car, David Porter, right there in that Ford Escort. Look at the fender flares on that car. Now, when I was a little boy, I saw one of those every four seconds, almost, going past my house. Were they all smoking like that? <laughs> you no. <know. laughs> but that was the car of the day. Loved it. So that kind of took over the Mini Cooper for like the family economic car? Yeah, I mean, as things grew and, you know, we got away from the really tiny cars uh, and then it became, you know, just like here, it became a utility vehicle and uh, something that you would go to the shops but also go on further distance. So, yeah, and you had to fit the family in. So yeah. you, that would be your work car and your play car. Well, he's in both. He's in that Escort in this group and then in our 134, he's going to be in a beautiful red Cortina. Fantastic cars, David Porter there. He's got this Mustang. That's number 87. Eric Bowman in a group six, 1969 Ford Mustang Boss 302. Let's see what we got here. So now they get through the twisty bits. That to me is the most dangerous curve. I have so many incidents happening. People try to overcorrect that instead of going through turn 10. And then they end up overcorrecting on the outside, yeah. back across the track, and then coming into the wall on the inside of turn 10. So I hope all of our drivers are careful there. Ooh, I've got an Axis fan here. Quinners made a comment that he's the Axis fan. And then Rowdy CM is like, thanks for mentioning Chip. Chip is awesome. We wish we saw more E46s, E36s, E30, and M3 BMWs out here with us. So if you've got an E46, E36, E30, some M3s, bring them out here and come racing. But look at this race has not stopped. It hasn't the top up front, no. You mentioned E30, that BMW E30, they do a, a one-way championship in New Zealand on E30s. And a lot of kids um, 
that's why they cut their teeth before they go into either supercars or let's say 86 or whatever. But if you want to be a touring car guy, a lot of people start in that one lane. What a great foundation. Man. Yeah. The E30, really well balanced. Lots of torque, that E96, great cars. You see the gloves there of uh, Corson? I love that he's doing that. So thank you, Corson. You're winning the broadcaster's favor by wearing uh, brightly colored gloves so we can see your hands working in there. You know, so Borchetta's got the power, but uh, Corson has the handling. He's got the handling technology of just, you know, yeah, and, yeah, I can say, and the modern day technology. So Scott doing a heck of a job, to be honest, because that's a handful. There's Rick Ortman. He came to our Roebling Road Racing School a few years ago and then uh, won the Group 10 Championship. But he raced in the Trans Am Series back in like the early 70s era. And right behind him is John Nash in that Lotus Super 7, the recipient of the VIR Gold Cup trophy this afternoon. And he always races that. I know he races a couple of Super 7s, but he always races that one, right? Yeah, that's his Group 8 Super 7, and he also has a Group 3. They look very similar, but he'll be racing that car. That's actually his Group 3 car. He'll be, he's racing it in Group 8, and then he's also racing it in, in uh, Group 3. And then he's being passed right there by the 63 Corvette. And how do we know that's a 63 Corvette? Split screen at the right. back. You're teaching right. me well, See, oh my Maestro. That's how you know it's a 63. Only year they did it. Look at that. You can't get more different cars than the 63. Big engine, heavy American muscle car, and then the add lightness of the Lotus Super 7. The but I just think that would be such a joy to go through the bushes and hedgerows of England on the way to a pub somewhere. Yeah. I think that would oh, be yeah. just fabulous. Or the London to Brighton race. Brilliant. Wouldn't maybe take it up to Scotland with the roof open like that, but or I'd have to pick my day. So somewhere out there is my boy. I got to give a shout out to him is uh, David Bearden. He is racing, let me see here, he's in the, should be the number 72. Number 73 in a 72 Porsche 911 ST, the white one. He had uh, back problems. He was with us at Charlotte. He was going to run for the championship for Group 8. There's David Nicholas and there. That is a pretty BMW. Yes. That's the NASDAQ. He raced that in the Camel GT Series in 73. He flipped it or wrecked it, I think, in 74, put it away in a barn. And then just this last year, Kevin, his mechanic and crew chief, found it somehow, surprised him with it, fixed it to go racing, and it is racing as it was put away in 1974. What a Fantastic. Cool story. That's the 129. Fred Beasley. That's a Group 12, 1980 Porsche 911. And that, look at that big whale tail there, downforce, forcing some air into that engine. But that wouldn't lack out of place in the IGT, would it? I mean, I, I, what I mean by that is that our IGT cars, Porsches, uh, are much more modern than that. But the difference, it hasn't yeah. changed that much, has no, it? No, the silhouette of these Porsche 911s, I call them. And that means, like, I, I consider that silhouette to be the 356. Yep. All the way to the 991s, 992s of today. Porsche has not changed in 70 years. Which is basically. remarkable in many ways, but also shows you just how good a car it is. Beetle silhouette. So here come the leaders. Yeah, and they've been glued together the whole race, and I think, like you say, they're really enjoying it. And uh, Scott Borchetta needed a bit of competition, and he's got it now. That should be Patrick Sessions there in that 63 Chevrolet Corvette. It is a mixed class. Corners is asking it's a mixed class. It is group 6, 8, and 12. Uh, so what is a Ford Escort doing out there? That Ford Escort would be a Group 8 car, basically a medium bore uh, production car. See, that's not the Sport window. Who's that? That's the 28. No, we have seen one of the 65. Yeah, that is. Corvette. Yeah. That's a beautiful car with the stripes coming down the side. The length of the car. I like that steam gray body style. Yeah. There she is, Sharon Edelman in that SVRA Blue Janetta. And then Caesar Cone in that yellow Alpha there at the back. This is 60 years of racing with Caesar Cone. 
another VIR Gold Cup recipient. Now, what's Scott Borchetta going to do here in traffic, leading the race with Corzin right behind him? The lap count is getting down. They should be taking the last lap sign here. It's beautiful there at Beasley to pull over for Borchetta. Let them through. It's not his race. Thank, thank you, Fred Beasley. And look at this. Final, Final lap. lap. So, is Mr. Corzin ready for winning, or is he going to let Borchetta take this? I doubt it. These two have been at it the whole race. He, I think he's going to challenge him. He needs to make his move here because Borchetta has the horsepower oh, yeah. on him and a little bit of the arrow advantage. So Corzin has him. He has the advantage, I think, from here to Oak Tree. Okay. And they're coming up on traffic as well. Well, they're, they're absolutely together, so we'll be able to tell by Oak Tree where an Oak Tree, yeah. by the way, if you're not familiar with VIR, is turn 11. You can see that Corzin has him in the braking. Let's see if David Nicholas gets out of the way here. This is the snake part. It's kind of a straight section, and it's a one lane up through here, through these uphill S's. And uh, Scott's put his right foot down and made the loud pedal go boom as he goes up. He shouldn't have to lift here much, but then they come up to treacherous turn 10. You got to get this turn right. Yeah, when I say turn 11, I mean Ooh. actually turn 12 because this is a coming in here, but really this whole section uh, is, and then you see those day glow gloves again, I love it. But that's where the oak tree used to be at 12, and then this is the most important corner because you need the drive out of here to go down that back straight, but this, again, will be where Borchetta has a bit of an advantage. As you can see, he's got the grunt. What I love and hate about Scott Borchetta is he doesn't get rattled. No. You know, when the cars are right behind him in his mirror, he does a really good job of not getting rattled by its, its he doesn't get nervous. And from, a, you know, as a spectator commentator, sometimes you'd like to see him get a little bit squirrely, but he's just a really fluid driver that just stays focused throughout. And that, and, you know, he, you know, that, like you say, he's been to drive schools and made his way learning bit by bit. But that last piece of the puzzle, that staying cool, is the hardest part, I think, for a lot of people. Yeah. Not this time, though. Scott Borchetta is going to come home again and win again. He hasn't lost a race in Group 6 this year. And that 1969 Corvette does it again in style, and Borchetta in the 98 wins. It's got those Johnny Lightning yeah. tributes on the hood there. The big machine, Chevy Corvette. That's, that's fun to see. We just saw Glenn Maurer go by in that Marlboro Alfa Romeo. There's some great cars in this field. So Robert Corzin does take second place in the Mustang Boss 302. And so I have a question, do they race the whole course? They do, do not race the longest course, but they race the traditional VRR course. There's a part of the course that I've, I know some other groups run, like Chump Car, when they have like 70 cars on the field, they run the, the big course, I forget what it's called, but we're running the full course. And then there's a grand course, I believe, that goes through the Patriot, which is the little course in the infield. So look at the highlights then of our SBA action from Group 6. And straight at the start, Borchetta and Corzan getting very close indeed. Group 6, 8 and 12 in all. A very eclectic group. And as the field spread out, some good racing. But at the front, it really was a two-way battle between the old and the new. Although it was a third place, Hildebrand was there too. And another older 70s Corvette, Corzan in the much more modern Mustang. Had to settle the second for the older 1969 Corvette. And Scott Borchetta wins again. So leave us a comment if you're watching this. What was your favorite car in that group? What do you want to see more of? What do you want to see less of? Or what do you want to hear less of? Let us know. But I think Chevy won that battle of Chevy versus Ford based on the result I'm seeing. Well, listen, we'll take a short break. But like you say, stay with us here on YouTube, on uh, Facebook. And if you're listening in on the app as well, stay with us from VIR. We'll take a short break. We'll be right back. 